Hi, I'm Jim Stroud, and this is my podcast. I read an article recently about Dr. Peter Scott Morgan, a scientist suffering from motor neuron disease. That's a disease that causes nerve cells to die, and as they do, electrical messages can get from the brain to your muscles, and over time, your muscles waste away. When this happens, you lose control over movements. Walking, talking, swallowing, even breathing becomes a challenge. But rather than give himself over to the disease, Dr. Peter Scott Morgan is pursuing a truly innovative approach. He has decided to turn himself into a cyborg, something he calls Peter 2.0. I'll share some details on that and related news after this. Entrepreneur Kylie Jenner makes an estimated $1 million per sponsored post on her Instagram, which makes her the highest paid celebrity influencer on the social media platform, according to the 2018 Instagram Rich List, compiled by Hopper HQ and Automated Instagram Scheduler. Jenner is followed by singer Selena Gomez, who gets $800,000 per sponsored post, and star soccer player Cristiano Ronaldo, who earns $750,000. Together, these and other up-and-coming stars contribute to the $1 billion influencer market, which is expected to double in value this year. Now, all that is great until there is an Instagram bug and you lose over a million followers, which happened to Kim Kardashian, Justin Bieber, and several others. If it could happen to them, it could most definitely happen to you. The moral of the story? Don't build your house on rented land. I suggest you do what I did and get your own mobile app with Superpass. Superpass makes cutting edge content apps easy, instant, and affordable. So whether you already have content or are looking to start making money by selling your podcasts or videos online, Superpass can help. So sure, Build up an audience on social media, but drive the traffic to a property you own, and that property should be Superpass. For more information, visit Superpass at www.superpass.app. That's www.supapass.app. Superpass.app. And be sure to tell them Jim Strauss sent you. The uh, new site Mirror reported on the story I cited earlier with the headline, Terminally Ill Scientist is About to Transform into World's First Cyborg. (laughs) You have to see the pictures posted along with the article to get the full effect of this, but here are a few quotes uh, to set the mood. Dr. Peter Scott Morgan, 61, was diagnosed with motor neuron disease two years ago, but instead of accepting his fate, he decided to challenge what it meant to be human. He said he wanted to push the boundaries of what science can achieve, so decided to extend his life and become fully robotic, known as Peter 2.0. The world-renowned roboticist has already undergone a series of incredibly complex and risky operations during his journey. This has included developing a remarkably lifelike avatar of his face before he lost any muscle. The avatar is designed to respond using artificially intelligent body language and he has also explored eye tracking technology to enable him to control multiple computers using only his eyes. Speaking of his transition, he said, quote, I'm about to be turned into Peter 2.0. And when I say Peter 2.0, I mean a cyborg. And when I say cyborg, I don't just mean any old cyborg. You understand. But by far the most advanced human cybernetic organism ever created in 13.8 billion years. I'm scheduled to become the world's first full cyborg. Almost everything about me is going to be irreversibly changed body and brain.
as remarkable as Peter 2.0 is, I was just as surprised to learn that this is the most advanced instance of an ongoing trend of people implanting technology into their bodies, often referred to as biohacking. Yet, to be fair, that's not the only meaning of the word biohacking. Sometimes biohacking is people using nutrition to hack their human biology. Other times, it's self-experimentation with drugs to improve your health. For the purposes of this podcast, however, biohacking, I'm referring to people altering their own bodies by implanting uh, do-it-yourself cybernetic <laughs> devices. When I think of biohacking in this way, people like uh, Neil Harbison comes to mind. Now, he was born completely colorblind and sees the world in shades of gray. But now, thanks to a device that literally looks like an antenna sticking out of his head, <laughs> no joke, Neil can hear color. Listen to Neil uh, explain himself in this, in this clip. To us, a cyborg is a feeling. It's feeling that you're not using technology, that you're not wearing technology. It's feeling that you are technology. Neil Harbison was born completely colorblind. And while Neil still can't see color, a device called the iBorg allows him to hear and sense colors. It picks up the dominant color in front of me and then it transposes this frequency of light into the frequency of sound. So it's related to the frequency of light. It's not an arbitrary relation. This light frequency has a specific note, which is the note that I hear, but a few octaves lower so that it's in the audible range. Neil has been able to hear color through bone conduction since 2004, when he convinced a doctor to anonymously perform a drastic surgery. My head was drilled four times so that I could have the antenna integrated, so it goes inside my skull, so I, I actually feel cyborg. I feel that even if I touch the antenna, I feel it's like a part of my body. It really feels like a new body part. There's no way of, of removing it, so it's, it's just uh, like other animals. They have antennas. I decided that I would have an antenna as well. The science behind all that is amazing, but I just can't get past this antenna sticking out of his head. I'll add a link to the video in the description because you have to see this for yourself. Uh, I'm not joking. Now, something else you have to see uh, for yourself is something more in line with how I would use this biohacking cyborg type technology which is restoring body movement to paraplegics. There's a company called Neurolife that uses a brain implant, an algorithm, and an electrode sleeve to give paralysis patients back control of their limbs. I saw a video where they were experimenting with this test subject, their first, their first test subject, a guy named uh, Ian Burkhart. It was truly remarkable to watch, but here's a, here's a clip from that video. Being injured at the C5 level means that I should I have pretty good strength through my biceps, but I don't really have any movement below my elbows at all. I rely on other people to help me every single day. They help me get dressed, get transferred into my wheelchair, um, brush my hair, and then at the end of the day, I also need help doing everything in reverse to get ready for bed. Independence is my number one goal. And regaining any use of my hands will really improve my independence. So it was something I was all for. You good? Yeah. So, so this technology has uh, three main component. The first component is uh, a tiny chip that is surgically implanted in Ian's brain and that records Ian's brain activity as he's thinking about moving his hand. You want a little more slack? No, that's fine. Is it good? OK, cool. Yeah. The second component is a computer algorithm that decodes Ian's brain activity and interprets the movement that he's thinking about. And the last component is a wearable sleeve, which has up to 160 electrodes, which activates the individual muscles to evoke the attempted movement. You said hand open first? Hand open first, yeah. When I first started with the study, just trying to open and close my hand was extremely challenging. I never had to think about moving my hand. It was just something that naturally happened. So it was something that took a lot of mental strength. OK, you ready? Yeah.
But today, with practice, I'm able to pick up an object and manipulate that around in space. I'm able to move individual fingers. I can do some complex grasps. These are looking good today. Yeah. You know, we've done everything from picking up a bottle and pouring it to playing Guitar Hero. Just being able to control more of your body that I thought I had lost forever is something that's really exciting and really promising. While some people use cyborg technology to overcome a disability, others do it for thrills. <laughs> Case in point, have you heard of this thing called the North Sense? Well, the North Sense is a small biotech chip that attaches to people's chests with piercings and vibrates whenever they face north, creating a sixth sense, a sense of direction. It could also quite possibly and unintentionally change how your brain works. Listen to this. When you start with one sense, you, you want to have more. And that's what cyborgism gives me. It gives me ability to go beyond my five senses. Mosin Minai is a geophysicist. He's also a cyborg. Cyborgism is just like a human being with uh, additional ability that he has gained through technology. Carry small things like paperclip. The first thing I put in my body was a chip. I put it here and uh, it gives the temperature of my body. But it's this little device on his chest attached with piercings that Mosin is most excited about right now. It's a small chip on my chest that vibrates whenever I face north. It's called North Sense, and about 300 people around the world have one. That simple buzz is, uh, it's, is the magic. That's Levu Babbitts. He invented it. He also wears one. Every time I, I uh, turn north, maybe you can hear it. You could call him a body hacker. These are people who use technology, things like microchips, magnets, or batteries, to enhance themselves by embedding it in their bodies. Like this employee at a company where people have chip implants that can unlock doors and start the copy machine. But Levy says North Sense is something different. Knowing which way is north all the time is a nice enhancement. But that's not the point here. He believes adding an extra sense to the body will change how the brain works. The North Sense creates in the brain in what we would call new pathways. So instead of my reality being built from X number of elements, now it's X plus one number of elements that I understand reality by. And there's precedent for this. The brain is amazing, it's plastic. That's Adrian Payarsh, and he's a neuroscientist at McGill University. He says the brain has an amazing way of molding itself to new experiences. And to understand this, he points to a 2011 study of London cab drivers. To drive one of the city's famous black taxis, drivers have to memorize 25,000 streets. It's a notoriously difficult task. And according to this study, it actually changed their brains. Science fiction is becoming science fact more and more each day. With all the new developments, however, there are pros and cons to using this type of technology, and this is what I think those pros and cons are. First, the pros. Walking with bionic limbs when you wouldn't otherwise be able to, as in the case of paraplegics, is definitely a pro. Improved senses, sight, smell, hearing, pro again. A better chance of surviving certain heart conditions, as in the case of a defibrillator, uh, which can increase your life expectancy, I would definitely say that's a pro. Improved mood and lower rates of depression for paraplegics who can now walk as a result of bionic limbs. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely a pro. 
And finally, a better quality of life with new bionic limbs or heightened senses are all great reasons for this type of cyborg uh, technology. But there are cons. Cons like uh, a bionic body part and implantable devices. Well, those, those things are not cheap. <laughs> they are rather expensive. Implanted devices in the body could also malfunction. Uh, the body might negatively react to implantation of these devices, sort of a case by case basis in that regard. There are medical risks involved in any type of surgery. So there's that. Other devices like metal detectors or anti-theft systems may also interfere with cyborg devices, pacemakers, for example. And it may interfere with the ability for those devices to function properly uh, <laughs> once they're inside you. This is according to the American Heart Association. So while there are pros, there are definitely cons. So where does my opinion lie? Well, if I were a paraplegic, I would definitely use this type of cyborg technology as soon as possible because the rewards far and away outweigh the negative consequences. If I were colorblind, I might consider using the same technology that Neil Harbison used as long as it does not include some antenna sticking out of my head. <laughs> I just can't get past that. But if uh, using this technology, uh, this biohacking cyborg technology, uh, if I was using that only to get a thrill of some sort, then I probably would pass. In fact, I know I would. What about you? Would you uh, use this technology if you were, let's say you weren't paraplegic and you weren't colorblind and you just wanted to get a thrill? Would you take the risk of implanting some of this stuff in you? If you love what you heard, hate what you heard, or don't know what you just heard, I want to know about it. You can leave a comment concerning this podcast on my website at www.jimstroud.com. In addition to finding source material and related information for this podcast episode, you'll find other goodies that I hope will make you smile. And if you have not already, please subscribe to my website. Your continued support keeps this podcast train chugging down the tracks.